Disney movies have given audiences some truly unforgettable and lovable characters over the years. And while many of these characters are friendly, inspiring, and funny, we've also been introduced to some bizarre characters as well, and today we're looking at some of the most strange. I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and these are Disney characters weird to weirdest. Starting out, we have the March Hare from Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland is a Disney classic showcasing the fascinating land where Alice magically ends up. However, it's hard to ignore a few of the more annoying residents whose behavior simply made no sense. For instance, the March Hare. This wacky mallet-carrying rabbit is Mad Hatter's best pal with whom he regularly drinks tea and engages in unbirthday parties. Although they are close and both insane, March Hare seems to be much more rude, loud, and overly energetic than the Hatter. Throughout the movie, the March Hare is shown to have little patience towards Alice. He either ignores her or completely dismisses her presence in Wonderland. I have an excellent idea. Let's change the subject. When she tries to tell how she ended up in Wonderland, the obnoxious rabbit continuously cuts her off and even makes scornful comments towards her. Not to mention his habit of starting his sentences with an elongated ah, and unnecessarily saying nothing, whatever, in every conversation. Following, we have Sai and Am from Lady and the Tramp. Sai and Am are identical, seal point Siamese cats from Disney's Lady and the Tramp. This mischievous pair takes full advantage of Aunt Sarah's love to cause trouble and make messes for their own enjoyment. They're sneaky and creepy to the point of being evil and in one scene, it's frightening to watch them near a baby. Another weird Disney character is Sebastian from The Little Mermaid. This red, Jamaican-accented crab in The Little Mermaid is not only a major character in the plot, but also serves as an all-important role of King Triton's advisor. He's also a distinguished court composer and songwriter. That said, he's asked to leave this esteemed position for babysitting duty so he is regularly seen watching over Triton's youngest daughter, Princess Ariel. But perhaps what's most absurd about this character is his name. As per the Disney Princess website, the crab's full name is Horatio Felonius Ignatius Crustaceus Sebastian. This means that Sebastian is his surname. Of course, the five named crab should have been called Horatio. How could Ariel trust him if he didn't even tell her his proper name? Another odd character, in our opinion, is Mushu from Mulan. Disney movies feature animal sidekicks that usually offer support and friendship while bringing humor to the storyline. My eyes can see straight through your armor. One of these characters is the fast-talking Chinese dragon, Mushu, who's also the self-appointed guardian of Fa Mulan. Although Mushu's scenes are quite hilarious, there have been instances where he turned out to be selfish, impulsive, and overconfident. Punch him is how men say hello. Notice how he strives to be one of the family guardians again and selfishly comes to Mulan's aid to turn her into a war hero. He believes that this will get him where he needs to be. This shows how self-centered he was. Also, Cricky tries to guide him down the right path. He takes this as nothing more than pestering, and almost always seems reluctant to accept his mistakes. He's definitely a Disney sidekick who is far more self-centered in his motivations, which makes him especially unique and certainly a bit weird in an entertaining way. Moving on, we have Tito from Oliver and Company. With Tito's character, the Disney film Oliver and Company proves that smaller sized dogs can be just as fierce as bigger ones. Man, you insulted my pride. That means death. Besides this 1988 movie, the character has made appearances in other shows as well, such as House of Mouse and Mickey Mouse. This proud chihuahua often gets into unnecessary fights with others, mainly due to his fiery temper. While some Disney fans may consider Tito adorable, cute, and good-hearted, others can't help but notice how pushy, temperamental, and overly hyper he is. It's weird how this dog simply refuses to leave anyone alone. Moving on, we have Wiggins from Pocahontas. Certainly not the most important character, he definitely comes off as strange, which warrants a quick entry on our list. Best known as Governor Ratcliffe's manservant, simply put, Wiggins is annoyingly foolish and has a habit of interrupting important conversations 
and moments with his stupid and irrelevant inventions. But moving on, next we have Sneezy from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Like most of the Seven Dwarfs, Sneezy's name reflects his nature. Due to his severe hay fever, he's prone to unpredictable and eruptive sneezing that often prevents him from speaking comfortably. When he talks, it sounds like he's constantly suffering a stuffy nose. We hear him frequently sneeze throughout the movie. In fact, his sneezes are of such enormous capacity that they blow away anything and anyone in his path. Sneezy can usually predict an incoming sneeze and quickly holds his nose while giving others a fair warning. Sometimes, however, you can't tell when you gotta, you gotta. Due to his violent sneezing, this character has to face a lot of embarrassment daily, despite his friendly nature. We're going back to Wonderland again to mention the Cheshire Cat. Honestly, given the nature of Alice in Wonderland, I suppose it's got an unfair advantage on this list. We could probably include a lot of characters from this movie. The Caterpillar, the Doorknob, they're all bizarre. But we think the Cheshire Cat is the most memorable and definitely the weirdest. What his motivation is, is tough to say, but causing trouble seems to be the answer. He pops up from time to time and weirds Alice out while also having a ton of fun. He's definitely strange, and we can't even say that he is unlikable, despite being a ball of tricks and destruction. Next, we have Rafiki from The Lion King. We have to give Rafiki credit. He may be weird, but he's also an incredibly wise mentor. He's essentially the mystic of the Pride Lands, sort of like a shaman, but at the same time, gets some pretty limited screen time that leaves him very ambiguous. Simply put, Rafiki's brand of strangeness is a positive one, and he's probably the most endearing and likable weird character on this list. Next, we have Madame Bonfamille from The Aristocats. Imagine a wealthy elderly woman living a luxurious life with an enormous fortune she built for herself, all thanks to her career as a famous opera singer. Now imagine the same woman handing over her entire life's fortune to a bunch of cats. Does it make sense? Well, this character from the Aristocats does just that, proving that she's a bit too trusting of others. A polite socialite, she is known for her kind nature and generosity. However, her main downfall becomes apparent when she remains unaware of Edgar's evil schemes. She loves her cats more than anything in the world. She considers them the greatest treasure she could own. Still, someone this rich, leaving all her wealth in the hands of four cats, sounds nothing less than silly. Even the biggest animal lovers would likely agree that there must be someone more deserving than her cats. Our second placed weirdest character goes to George Darling from Peter Pan. George Darling is Mary's husband and of course, the father of Wendy, John, and Michael. His strict demeanor is a huge problem at times, especially when he's mad at Wendy for maturing. Instead of acting like a sensible father and understanding that she's growing up, George is frustrated at Wendy, particularly when she speaks of Peter Pan in a public situation. Another family member who tolerates his pointless anger is the St. Bernard and family's nursemaid, Nana. Apparently, Nana shouldn't act like a dog in front of George because that ticks him off too. Although this may not be peculiar for a 1953 movie, George's character is undoubtedly bizarre when looked at from today's lens. And finally, our weirdest character has to be Darla from Finding Nemo. While Finding Nemo doesn't feature a villain in the traditional sense, Darla does fill the role of a character everyone can dislike. All you need to know about this little monstrosity is that the movie repeatedly uses the musical cue from Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho to introduce her character, and rightfully so, since as far as the fish are concerned, this eight-year-old is no less than a serial killer. Every time her dentist uncle gives her a fish, Darla instantly gets overexcited, relentlessly shaking the bag until the poor creature dies. On top of that, she feels zero remorse for her actions, which makes her truly unlikable. Although Darla isn't a crucial part of Finding Nemo, she does become the least liked character quite easily during her brief scenes. But let us know in the comments section, who do you think is the weirdest Disney character, in your opinion? and let us know what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.